Oh. That's mad. Welcome back guys, welcome back. I'm messing around with quadcopters today. In particular this one, the little Baby Hawk 2 HD. Do you remember in another video, I basically lost this and it was gone for about three months um, up a tree. Long story short, the kind of tornado came through. They cast it as a tornado in the UK. It was just really high, high winds. And basically it fell down and I found it on the floor. It's been running absolutely fine since, but I've noticed an issue with one of the motors. One of the motors is actually kind of, um, yeah, it's a bit bit gritty because I think it kind of, the bearings have basically rusted. But surprisingly enough, um, if you haven't seen that video, go check it out. I basically just got this drone, kind of dried it out and um, it was all working absolutely fine, which is kind of crazy. So obviously I needed to get some new motors and I thought actually this could be a good opportunity to actually, you know, pimp this thing up a bit. So what I've actually gone and done is tried to make this thing 6S. So out of the box, when you buy this bind and fly, it's a 4S quadcopter. It's got 3600 kV motors on it, which is, they're not enough, you know, they're too much for 6S. So the motors I've gone for are the Flywoo. These are a lot of Dave C FPV kind of collaboration. The Nin 1404, and these are actually a 2750 kV, so they're actually more suited for 6S. I don't really know how this is gonna go on 6S. Look at that, that's a 6S 450. I mean, how cool is that? 22.2 volts. It's just mad, isn't it? Having something that small running on that much power. Anyway, so when I first got this, it had a Cadex Vista um, digital FPV system in it. I've actually put an O3 air unit in here now. Now the experiments I've done with this, um, I've had the camera mounted in all sorts of ways because basically these O3 cameras need to be mounted, they need to be soft mounted because the gyro um, is actually in the camera. So to actually get stable footage out of it, um, you know, because obviously you've got the onboard recording and um, onboard stabilization for the video, on here. So I've done a bit of experimentation. I think in this particular setup, I've got a feeling, I haven't completely tested this out, but I think in the recording, the frame is actually still slightly visible. The props aren't, but the, the frame is. Um, I can move this camera probably a little bit further forward. Maybe I'll have to make like a custom mount for it, but it will work for the purposes of the tests. And you'll be able to see the footage as well and see what I'm talking about. Antennas mounted at the back there. They tend to work quite well, just, just literally out the back like that rather than up. Um, I don't know why, just the testing I've done, they seem to work a little bit better. Now, this quad has actually got as standard, you know, when you buy the bind and fly, it has this flight controller in it, um, covered in insulating tape. So the standard flight controller is actually capable of 6S. So this is what made me think I'm gonna utilize the existing flight controller. Why is it on the bench then? <laughs> Basically, I had some problems. I don't know what's happened, but I think after a crash in the snow, um, weirdly enough, it wasn't actually the, the being stuck in a tree for three months that I think has killed it, but something's gone wrong here. It's not arming. Um, and I just thought, let's just go for the big gun. So I've actually gone for this. This is the Acon 60. Yes, this has 60 amp ESCs on it. Basically four 60 amp ESCs in something that small. It's already in there. I mean, absolutely nuts. Crazy bit of technology. Um, I don't think it's that new. I think it's been around a little while, but anyway, you can see I've mounted it in here and it is a bit bigger than the other one. But the thing is, it fits absolutely perfectly because you've got this, this frame is amazing. You've got like um, this sort of recessed kind of flight controller section. And this frame of standard has got this like clear plastic shield um, which protects the um, flight controller from water. So that is, that's really cool. So if you land in something wet like grass, chances are it will be okay. But what I will say, this flight controller looks like it's conformal coated as well underneath. It isn't conformal coated on the top, but it is on the bottom. So yeah, guys, that is the 6S Baby Hawk HD2 Mark II. <laughs> um, what else have I done? I've basically replaced all the, um, the little M2 screws as well um, for ones that aren't made out of cheese. Uh, stronger ones, these are the ones I got from Amazon and it is all ready to go. I've had a few issues with um, setting up beta flight. The main problem was sorting out the order of the motors. The flight control is actually the right way around. I've installed it correctly, but 
you really got to check when you set up beta flight that you know it sounds obvious that you can go to the first screen and it will show you your orientation and everything basically the yaw was off 90 degrees i think i turned it minus 90 degrees and everything's correct so basically in the screen when you tilt it forward it's forward back you know left right everything coordinates with you know how it how it's supposed to work so thanks to a joshua bardwell video i managed to sort that out so something to be aware of if you get this flight controller for um a baby hawk 2 uh, hd um you know you install it right but the motor directions will be all all wrong what i actually like in beta flight now which wasn't i don't know when they brought this in but when i first started building um quadcopters you couldn't reverse the motors in beta flight you had to you know do it another way or just reverse the wires on the motor but you can actually set the motor directions on beta flight now which i didn't know and that's that's pretty cool that's really useful you haven't got to unwire anything or unsold anything so yeah all up weight then love that battery on there 237 grams so well under 250 for an absolute potentially an absolute ripper so obviously this is a three and a half inch i've got three and a half inch avan emax props these are the props that they actually you know supply with this drone um i really like these i've got these on um this as well i've got these on the ih2 the smaller versions they just they've just got a lot of lift it makes it really floaty um you know i've got some other hq props i might try the three inch ones um to see you know what speed it will do on those but yeah i really rate these props anyway they're quiet as well so in here i've also got a crossfire receiver um you can see it there i haven't actually heat shrunk that because i haven't got any clear heat shrink available but um it's in there and it's it's secured to the to the air unit so hopefully you won't get any issues with that um it's got just like a standard dipole antenna on there nothing kind of fancy but i've, I've never hit the limit of crossfire it, it's just an amazing system um you know even with an antenna like that you lose video way before you're going to lose um your control link just a bit of a closer look at the camera mounting um standard camera mounts but i have actually filed away um a bit of the frame I might have to file away a little bit more as well, just depending on whether you can actually see um, the framing shot. If I can actually do it, you can see um, the bottom has got these kind of pointed bits that stick out, which is quite dangerous as well. But yeah, I've rounded the tops off. Hopefully that will help. I need to check the video in a minute. Um, and also these kind of like TPU mounts here, I've just basically cut a slither because what they've got is just a standoff inside. Um, so it's just TPU with like a metal standoff in there. Um, it would be possible to just print something else, I suppose, another mount. I, I suppose that's what's going to end up happening with a lot of these um, kind of conversions over to O3. Because it's probably not worth a new frame, but, um, you know, manufacturers designing a completely new frame. But they could kind of just, you know, create like a, a mount that you could print yourself or even buy one um just to make it kind of a bit easier but yeah i don't know if you can see it they're soft mounted as well it's just like got o-rings in there just to space it out you can see that it's not completely tight the experience i've had with the o3 it really really is really sensitive to vibration it's probably only you know you're going to be fighting quite a losing battle on small stuff because the vibrations are just a lot more um than the bigger stuff and if you got a bigger quad you could just stick a gopro on it couldn't you really um but it's nice to have a 4k 60 stabilized quad you know that's under 250 grams and he's gonna have some serious performance i think so enough chat let's go test this out right with the field i've got um this new bag here which i'm going to do another video about it's really cool it goes on the back of the bike everything's in here including a heated lipo um, compartment as well so I'll, I'll be showing you that at another point we've got the um got the quad here ready to go there it is in there these are all nice and toasty you ready i think so Let's see what this goes like then i've done a little hover test so i know that it's i know that it's kind of flying okay but um yeah just give it a blast see what happens There's dogs here, there's dogs here, there's dogs here. There's a dog here? Yeah, look. It's running after it. He won't catch it. Whoa. He's running after it. Yeah, look. <laughs> Careful though. We've got a dog. Don't land it. Where is he? They're both around here. He's gone running after, isn't he? I can see him. He's coming towards us, isn't he? <laughs> running in between me and you. <laughs> right. 
You still filming? Yeah. Okay, well, I'm going to go for a little rip. Got some power. So. Oh. <laughs> That's mad. There's people down there. People behind us, yeah. Like, no, down by the lake, so maybe come back. I'm coming in. It's madness. Right, so first thoughts then. So, first of all, I moved the camera forward because it was getting in the way. Um, it's getting annoying seeing the frame all the time, so I've actually moved it right forward. Um, that's not going to be practical because if you whack it, you might damage that camera. Although I have whacked that a few times and it's actually been fine, but I wouldn't go flying into a wall or anything. Um, so we're going to have a look at different methods for doing for mounting that. Um, props aren't in view, so that's good. Next up, how's it flying? Okay, it's flying fine on the beta flight stock settings. Um, all the PIV values are exactly the way um, they are out of the box, so it's flying pretty nicely. I'm not an expert, it, it seems to be flying quite well. There is a problem here though, and that is these batteries do not seem to be giving out the punch and performance that you might expect. They were nice and warm. It was a cold day, but they were nice and warm. I made sure they were you know, nice and toasty in that bag. Uh, with the heater but yeah we're seeing massive voltage drops um, these are 450 milliamp hour batteries and they're meant to be 80c and 160c burst so what's 80c 80c on a 450 is going to be so 0 0.450 times 80 it's meant to be holding 36 amps continuous i mean it does seem like a big ask from a battery that small but it's supposed to do it um so yeah, big voltage sags on the climb outs and at one point we did actually go below three volts, which is gonna be really bad for these batteries. So yeah, jury's out on that. So this is not pulling crazy amps, something like 30 amps or something. That was the maximum I clocked. And that was the second, you know, crazy climb out that I did um, where the battery voltage was a bit lower and obviously, you know, a bit more current was needed to, um, to get the same power output, like compared to, you know, the first climb out, which was probably like 25 amps or something like that. So yeah, it's interesting stuff this, um, but I definitely think we've got like maybe a weakness on these batteries. I could try putting something bigger on here. Um, it would probably actually kind of counteract its own weight and be better for the batteries. But all in all, if we can sort the battery issue out, this will be an absolute ripper. Also, motors weren't hot at all. They're absolutely fine. Um, just come down cold. So that's good as what you'd expect. Other bits and pieces I need to configure in beta flight as well. There was a core temperature um, warning where it was reaching something like 80 degrees. Not sure what that's about. Um, also, the battery capacity gauge at the top didn't seem to be working, but that's just a minor fix. It's probably because we haven't got capacity configured in beta flight. Anyway, I think this just about sums it up. It's a lot of fun if you want to do this. Um, I think this frame's great. It's really strong as well. Um, and obviously with these motors and the O3, 
and this flight controller, it's, it's an absolute blast. But we need to sort out battery situation, what is actually going on, um, why are they sagging so much. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed this one, and I'll catch you next time. Thank you.